Hello everybody and welcome back to an Exit TV. This is Kai Knight and this is DE New here live from the Prague Challenge. We've got an Exis versus Irinus. Obviously this is a best of three game for those of you guys who just joined us. These are two teams played against each other on the Mirage and Exis emerged victorious. Which means if an Exis were to win this map, well, they'd be progressing to the next round. If they were to lose this map, then we would have a third map, which would obviously be the decider between both sides. So Dean Nuke, uh, an interesting map, very, very heavily CT sided. There's you've got two bomb sites which are directly on top of each other, and really the CTs play very, very defensive. So the first CT is spotted, and he deals a bit of damage onto Jiri. Lucas is also hurt at ramp. He's trying to push release of his playing ramp along with Yuzi. Blocks versus. And what a shot by Yuzi! One bullet is all Yuzi needs to take down Lucas, and that is the opening kill of this pistol round here on Dean Nuke. So, what can the terrorists pull out the bag? Nessich is chilling out behind, who will also make his way towards. Actually, no, he's gonna play as the backup player, just watching out for the CT rotate. So, 4 on 4. Yuzi takes down Jiri elsewhere on the map, and Ice also has his eyes on Yuzi, trying to prevent Yuzi from taking anyone down, and the T's will now drop, we can confirm, to the B-bomb site MX, however, they don't know that, MX is dead, and prepared for him, but wasn't prepared enough as Ice dropped him, and it is now 3-on-3, three three. so anyone's round, if the T's were to win this one, well, CT sided map, lost by Nexus, and it's looking like a uh, likelihood now as Hoods G and Rattlesnake are dropped by Nessich and the final CT left alive is Hughes, so can he pull off this 3 versus 1 clutch? He's up against Ice Portal and Nessich, he knows that the bomb is down. He's, he looks for this last terrorist, but it wasn't meant to be, and Ice got his second kill of the half, of the half of the round, well, it is of the half. So, 1-0 uh, eeriness, and again, Inexis are yet to win a pistol round against the Czech Republic side. So, uh, not very good for Inexis from that perspective, but I'm sure eeriness will be over the moon. So, uh, those of you guys familiar with Counter-Strike, I say this on pretty much every match. You win the pistol round, you get given more money than the opposition, so you get to buy better guns. So really, as soon as you win the pistol round, on paper, you should be guaranteed um, at least another round, at least to put you 2-0 in front. So we see Lucas with his Galil, Nessich with his MP7, actually I believe that is a UMP, Bordel with his, his, what's the name of that gun, anyways, I can't, it's with his Bison, that's it, he deals damage onto Rattlesnake, who was dink, Rattlesnake left on 26 HP, however MX will get the first kill of the round onto Nessich, so let's go see what's happening on the other side of the map. The uh, T's working outside at the moment, the CT's just really, the CTs on nuke really, just hold the bomb site, wait for the T's to come and then deal with them, especially when you consider the fact that they don't have very, a lot of weapons aboard with a very nice shot onto the head of Rattlesnake there, Rattlesnake was in garage, released however returns a favour, so 3 versus 4, and funny enough, the team with better weapons find themselves one man down. So. Can Bordel pull out the bag now? Jiri is left on 10 HP, so we could actually see a very interesting round where Anexis end up winning the game, uh, winning the round. Sorry, and if Anexis were to win this round, well, it would definitely hurt Irinus' economy. But Ice somewhere else on the A bomb site with two kills, even out. It's now three versus two, and there's Ice with his third. Well played, Ice, and I'll tell you what, he just turned this four versus, I believe, what was a four versus three into a 3 versus 1 in the favour of his team. So what can MX pull out of the bag now? He's only got a pistol. We know that Jiri's in heaven. He doesn't. We know that Jiri's only on 10 HP. He doesn't. Well, he might do, assuming his teammates have uh, realised that. So MX runs into one of the terrorists. Can he deal with Bordel? Bordel on 22 HP, however. Jiri will probably come and help Bordel out, but he won't need to because Bordel finishes MX off and uh, a huge round, a phenomenal round from Ice. Very well played by the Irinus Czech Republican player. And Irinus find themselves 2 0 up on a very heavy CT sided map. So Anexis will uh, definitely have to step their game up. But then again, we said that on Mirage. Anexis went, I think it was three or four rounds down and then turned it round. Granted, Irinus might argue that the server crashed, so uh, all their momentum was gone. But at the end of the day, it's the Result that counts and Lucas gets dropped by Hoods G. Poor by Lucas. Lucas, it has to be said, 
Um, on Mirage, he wasn't the best eeriness player, and by the looks of things, unfortunately for him, he's not having the game of his career here on Nuke either. So let's take a look at the scoreboard, see what's going on. Husey topping it for the Nexus. Two kills, two deaths, followed by release, Hood, ZG, MX and Rattlesnake. And Ice with five kills, zero deaths, and Baller with four kills, zero deaths. So let's see what Baller can do now. Takes down MX, he made his way through backsteps, back steps. Theory of me, backsteps. Back I think most of you guys who uh, used to play Counter-Strike Source will know what I mean by saying backsteps. So my bad about that. So four on four, MX and Lucas are the players down. Release drops Jiri, Nessage drops release, but Rattlesnake drops Nessage. So a lot of players being dropped at the moment. Two versus two. Baldwin's going to get pushed. But however, he does take Husey down. And Husey is the only CT alive. Along with Rattlesnake. But he's only got two HP. So let's consider him dead and watch Husey G instead. And he will take down Baldwin. So, two versus one. Rattlesnake is being pushed by Let's Dance. And Ice takes him down. So it's all down between Ice and Husey G. And Ice, again, going big. With two quick kills in that round. Very well played by Ice. And he has definitely been Eerinus' standout player so far during this game. I think a Eerinus player just had to reconnect there for whatever reason. It was Nessage, so I think he might find himself low on cash, which is certainly something Eerinus don't want at the moment. And I think Eerinus would be happy with around with, with five rounds. So uh, three rounds in and uh, three rounds on the board. I doubt they're going to be complaining much about that. So, Gefahr Deutsch Kran. I've got no idea what that means, but I'm going to assume it's German. So, still 5 on 5. Lucas and Ice both work in the ramp area with two CTs playing ramp. And explain the rafters area, or Mustang, I believe, is what it's referred to in the American Counter Strike world. But so far, just spamming left, right, and center by the terrorists, trying to make their their presence hurt. However, hang on a second. I'll tell you what. Where is he? Oh well, forget it. I thought I saw a terrorist running outside who uh, made his way, who sneaked his way past Rattlesnake. Anyways, focusing back on the game. Looks like the terrorists are going to focus on A, are they? Fearing me. Can't quite tell. 30 seconds to go, so they're going to have to make a move on if they, you know, really want to get this bomb down. Lucas gets flashed at ramp. Release is the CT player ramp. Let's see what Release can do. It looks like it's going to get pushed at ramp. Ice takes down Husey. Down goes Release by Ice. I'll tell you what, Ice is on fire. Rattlesnake gets that kill and will fall back. He will call to his teammates. Now, I'm going to second, guys. They've all gone ramp. They're probably going to go down and plant on B. Hoods G takes down Nessage. Bordel takes down Hoods G. And it's two versus two. Lucas on one HP probably will be dropped sometime soon. Rattlesnake with that off. Ice again going big with his third kill. Can he make it for the time runs out? And Rattlesnake using all his years of experience there, holding the, the terrorists, making sure they can't plant the bomb. 3-1. That could be a very, very important round for a Nexus. It'll give him a way back into the game. It was a buy round. In my opinion, what went wrong there? Well, I think Eerinus took way too much time just spamming hook, basically. Um, I can see what they were trying to do, but you've always got to keep a bit extra time just in case things don't go according to plan. So Lucas pushing up and just holding that angle, trying to make his presence heard. Let's have a look at what Release is doing with his FAMAS. He's been uh, heavy tagged. He's going to fall back down. Actually, no, he's not. He's going to flash and probably peak once again. We all know what Release can do with that FAMAS. So far, so good. The uh, Ramp push begins. Rattlesnake takes down Lucas with a nade and release onto Bordel. So, the CT start rotating. Hughes has come to join in on the action. Nessage drops release. Four versus two now. What can Nessage and Jiri do to try and uh, change the game? I'll tell you what, Jiri couldn't do anything after Hughes finished him off with a beautiful Fama shot. But Nessage has something else up his sleeve. So, two kills so far in this round. 3 1 to Eeriness. Can he pull this two versus one clutch off? Looks like, oh, finds himself up against Hoods G and MX. Two both very experienced players. But however, we've seen what Nessage has been capable of so far at the Proud Challenge. 30 seconds to go. He obviously needs to plant the bomb. Whether on A or B. MX is playing Heaven. And Hoods G is watching the B bomb site. So MX will be covering the A bomb site. Hoods G is covering the B bomb site. So Nessage with 15 seconds to go. He does have the bomb. Is he not going to go for this? He is. He's going to use. The toxic barrels. 
to his advantage. Here's MX. He's going to chase him down. However, he can't hit the shots. He can't hit the shots. MX is on 45 HP. He's had damage dealt to him. Let's see how Hunchi is going to rotate here as he comes up the vents. He comes up the vents, spots Nessic, drops him down, take a bow, Hunchi, and the defuse will be initiated. So, an excess worth 3-0 down. They're basically repeating what they did on the previous map by uh, pulling off a very nice comeback. So, uh, I think we'll see the score. Yeah, there it is. 3-2 to an excess. So, an excess will probably... Will, well want as many rounds as they can really. This is a very heavy CT sided map, but you know it's not abnormal. It's rare but it's not abnormal to see um, several teams come back strong as terrorists on DU. So we do see a buy round from both sides. Let's have a look at what Rattlesnake is doing outside. It looks like the team have called uh, a push onto the A-bomb. So let's go and take a look at what the terrorists are doing as the smokes are out. Hood's G drops ice. Terrorists are all over this bomb side. Hudji gets his second of the round. Can he make it three? Not yet. Lucas and Jiri with kill apiece. Three on three. Hudji takes down Jiri for his third kill, but Bordel finishes him off. Hurricane Hughes rotating around the back. Lucas takes him down, and now it's all down to Rattlesnake. What can he pull out of the bag? Years of experience with that AWP of his. He's being flashed. He turns around, and Lucas, who we said hadn't played very, very well so far, with uh, three kills that round. So well played, Lucas. Obviously, he can't hear me. But if he does ever watch this, well played Lucas turning it around. So 4-2, uh, may uh, play very, played very, very well. Played that round very, very well. Now we're going to have to see an Exus being forced to Eco. So let's see what an Exus is going to do on this Eco. Many different teams do different things on Eco. Some of them play normally. Some of them just push ramp. Some of them push outside. So let's see. It looks like it's going to be a regular split. With uh, Hudji playing on the A-bomb side release. He's actually played rather aggro. He's going to get taken down. I mean, I don't understand why you would take an AK-47, uh, uh, challenge an AK-47 at that height, at uh, that range, sorry. But anyway, Fudge G takes down Lucas with a beautiful shot through the squeaky door. MX also on to Nessic. Three on three now, HP-wise, in favour of the Czech Republicans. As Irinus Jiri will drop down into main. And we'll scan that A-bomb site for any potential counter-terrorists. Who are looking to cause problems. We know Hudji G is going to make his way up through vents. They don't know that. We know that two CTs are in lobby. They don't know that. Jiri spots Rattlesnake. Hurt hits him hard. Rattlesnake is on 22 HP and Border will get rid of him. So that's bye bye Rattlesnake. And I think the terrorists would really, are in an ideal world, want to get the bomb down here. So uh, just wait. Ice has got the bomb. Let's see what Hudji can do now as he scans that A bomb site. Looks for potential terrorists to. Uh, Kill. 18 HP left on him now. He's only got a pistol, that's not much he can do, and I think Husey is aware that one terrorist is in hut. So he's going to fall back and save that AK. But she's also going to fall back and save his pistol. So <laughs> I guess he just doesn't want to die, so uh, fair enough. And it will be 5 2 eeriness. I don't think many of us were really expecting that. Terrorists win. And there we have it, terrorists win. So 5-2 to the terrorists on D and U. Wow. Nexus obviously have enough money to buy now. Rattlesnake with his orb. So let's take a look at what Rattlesnake is going to do, how he's going to play outside. Are any terrorists going to go outside? There actually are, oh, there's three. There's Border and Nessic looking to go outside, so let's have a look at how Rattlesnake tries to deal with them. He's preparing himself. Smoke went out, so there wasn't much Rattlesnake could have done unless he had anti-smoke on. Takes down Bordle, good shot, and Nessic, well played by Rattlesnake. And that's three down for Eeriness, and Rattlesnake going big, exactly when Anexus needed it. It was a, uh, an important round for Anexus, and Rattlesnake doing what he does best. Killing people with the big green gun, that is the AWP. So, let's see what Ice can do. He has been Uranus's standout player so far. Where are you, Ice? There he is. He's trying to take take on release at ramp. The release is too good for him. And down he goes. So, two big kills from Rattlesnake to give Anexus a colossal round. They really needed that, considering they're already five rounds down. 
as counter-terrorists on Nuke. Really, in, a, in an ideal scenario, Anectis really can't afford to give Irinus any more rounds. They can't take away rounds from Irinus now, so really, if they were to give 6 or 7 rounds away, well, Anectis would have to play the game of their life, I'm telling you now, on... Uh, on the third map. But anyways, Rattlesnake with the first kill onto Ice and the T's. Looked like they attempted a uh, squeaky push. Uzi with a one bullet, M4 headshot onto Lucas. And uh, a very quick round. That didn't go according to plan for Eriness. Leaves Nessic alone on the new by himself. He does have the bomb though. I think he's going to play it patient. He's still got a minute to go. He's just going to wait for CT to wait for one of the CTs to make a mistake first. However, Nessic peaked with his Jeep and paid the price as he finds himself on 2 HP. So by the looks of things, he's just going to fall back now. Probably sit in the yellow, in the white truck. He's dropped the bomb. Probably to try and confuse an Nexus. And he is going to hide with 30 seconds left. So he's holding, he's preparing himself with that flash just in case he hears any and Exus players approaching him. We obviously know that no Exus players are approaching him. Exus playing it by the book, holding the bomb site. I mean, on paper, on a map like Nuke, Nessic, well, fair enough, he's one player, so it should be easy to take down, but the fact that he's only one player can also make him hard to track. However, five, four, three, two, one, the countdown finishes, and the CTs get another important round. And 5 4, so the comeback is on. Take a look at the scoreboard Hood's Jeep, who, uh, without a doubt, didn't have the best game of his career on Mirage. He's making up for it now on Nuke, with 9 kills and 5 deaths. Release, 6 kills, 8 deaths. Rattlesnake with 6 kills, 6 deaths, and followed by Husey and MX. Ice and Bordel topping it for Eriness and Nessic, Jiri and Lucas. Well, three kills for Nessic, one kill for Jiri, one kill for Lucas. So it's definitely not the game of their career. So it was an A push. We uh, missed it, unfortunately. Hoodsy G took down MX. MX with his second of the round. And it's all down to Bordel and Nessic. Nessic has pushed onto the A bomb site. No, he hasn't. Sorry, that was in ramp room. So he's going to push ramp room, try and uh, find Release, who does normally play ramp room. However, we know that Release instead. Is actually sat in crows or heaven or whatever you want to call it. So Nessic by himself, it looks very likely that Nexus will make it five on five now. As the clock ticks away here on round ten. Nessic almost pushed there by release, but release seemed to decide against it. I think release dropped I think he had an AWP. No he's Dropped it for an M4. Nessic is surrounded. It's false release. Release also spots him though. So CPs will track him down. Nessic will take down release. And now what's important now is that Nexus don't push Nessic one by one. They need to push him as a team. Nessic, here's MX making his way up. From the new pros. So Husey, well done. They list is as if they could hear me. They pushed him as a team. MX was the decoy. Husey came from behind. And Nessic really stood no chance. So 5-5. Five, five. Nexus were 5 1 down. Now they made it 5 5. So, unfortunately for the terrorists, it's going to cause them, it's going to force them, sorry, to deco. So, Jiri with the Deagle. And a few of the other players on regular pistols. Looks like they're going to go for a ramp pressure. Let's have a take a look at what Release can do here. Release is going to get pushed. Release sprays. But, unfortunately for him, took none of them down. Lucas with a. Deagle headshot onto release, and now they're going to push the B bomb site. Jiri picks up the M4. It did belong to release. Use it with two great kills there. Use it with three. Can he make it four? No, he can't. Hoods G with the kill onto Jiri, but hang on a second. Ice is still alive. Can Husey make it four for himself? No, he can't. He's actually dead. But <laughs> unfortunately for him, but a big round from Husey. Very well played by him. So now it's all down to Ice, and a good shot by Ice onto Rattlesnake. With that Deagle, and knows exactly where Hood's G is. So the bomb is down. Actually, Ice does have the bomb. So he aims at Hood's G's head. Now it's 
a game of cat and mouse. MX in the vent area, but Hood G takes care of the business and also MX in the process picks up that AWP for his teammate Rattlesnake. Obviously the AWP is a very expensive gun, so in an ideal world, you don't want to have to buy a new one if you can get one for free, or at least recycle the one that you had on a previous round. So, 6-5 and X is finally showing us what they're made of. Let's have a look at what the T's are going to do here. More or less an outside lobby split. Ice causing problems near ramp room. He's smoking it out. He smokes out ramp room. He ensures that release doesn't rotate because release will always stay there, which obviously means one less counter terrorist on the other side of the map. Rattlesnake with a big kill onto Nessage with the orb. Release knows that some terrorists are at ramp. But anyway, let's concentrate on somewhere else. Jiri's made a hole in that squeaky door. Can't spot any counter terrorists at the moment. It's just. Really, we saw Irinus do this before and they left it too late to push onto the bomb site. So uh, hopefully they will make a move on soon, especially considering they're two men down. Molotov there into hot. Deals a bit of damage onto Jiri. Lucas, I think, by the looks of things, will start to push ramp by himself. No, he won't. Ice takes down Newsy with a very, very good kill through that squeaky door. Obviously, that hole in the squeaky door, something Valve introduced into Counter Strike Offensive. Never used to exist in Counter Strike. 1.6 and source, you can never really shoot a hole through the door. You see now many terrorists use it to their advantage, as well as many CTs use it to their advantage. Anyway, the teams make their way, MX with two kills. And who's that who got the third kill? I can't actually tell because of the Counter Strike source, Counter Strike ter uh, Counter Terrorist win, but it was um, uh, Hoods G who got the kill. So Hoods G with 14 kills. Five deaths, who's he not too far behind, along with MX and Rattlesnake. With regards to what's going on uh, for Erius, we've got Ice and Vordel on 13 10 kills each, and Nessich, Jerry, and Lucas on 4 1 2. So, really, it's uh, two, two, two players, I think it's safe to say, are carrying Erius at the moment. But again, it's a team game, so let's see how the ter what the terrorists are going to do now. Looks like an outside push. Let's go take a look at what Rattlesnake is going to do. Good shot by Rattlesnake as he takes out the uh, Ice of an Nessich. Uses his AK-47 to drop Rattlesnake, and that is an orb gone to waste. So Hurricane Husey comes from somewhere and finishes off Nessie. So four versus three in favor of the counter terrorist. But the Husey is quite heavily tagged, so he could easily go down after being hit by one AK bullet. And is that what's going to happen? No, he uh, got hit by an AK bullet, but fortunately for him, it was through some metal. So he is going to live to fight another day. Seven five to a Nexus. Husey playing in the rafters area. Lucas in lobby, trying to wait for release to really push outside ramp. We know who's G is going to try and push Lucas down. Actually, no, he isn't. Oh dear, what's going to happen here? Lucas is going to see release. Can he take him out? Release takes care of the business. And uh, quite poor by Lucas. Who's he now? Oops, Husey gets killed by Bordel. Never noticed that. And now it's three versus two. So what can the terrorists do here? 17 seconds to go. Release not to where Bordel is. Bordel drops him. Jiri drops MX. And oh my days, this could actually become a clutch. And Bordel gets the kill. And very, very well played by Irinus. It just happened so fast. I'm not quite sure what happened, to be fully honest. Bordel came up from over, uh, up the stairs into heaven. Killed one of the counter-terrorists. And then that just completely turned around. Release had rotated from ramp, came into the huts area, he knew exactly where Bordel was, but Bordel was too good for him. And then Jiri pushed main, and oh dear, two kills apiece, and very well played, and that could be a huge round for Erinus. There's a big difference on you as terrorists when you have five rounds, as opposed to when you have six rounds. That extra round could make all the difference at the end of the day. It will mean that Anexus' job will be a lot harder, and let's see what's going to happen now. Can Anexus make up for it? Release. Gets the kill onto Lucas with his M4 at Ramp. Rattlesnake onto Bordo with his up. And it's 5 versus 3, but we've already seen Irinus in that previous round turn around the handicap. Can they do it again? Jiri continues to make holes in that big green door that Dean Nuke has become famous for. So, looks like the terrorists are going to prepare. Oh dear. Molotov grenade into Hut and Les Dance is in trouble. Jiri pushes, however, the A bomb site by himself. Let's go see what he can do. They're all going to try and jump out the window. Hoods G and MX take down Jiri and Hoods G from behind with his second to take down Message. So, uh, a quick round there. As soon as. 
soon as the terrorists really pushed the A bomb site. CT's had it under control. So 8 6. The Nexus really will want 9 6. If they were to get uh, 8 7 here, well, I'll tell you what, they shouldn't be happy with that whatsoever on it. And what is a uh, CT, CT sided map? So, what the terrorists going to do? It looks like they're going to boost outside. So, let's go take a look at Rattlesnake. Actually, Rattlesnake has changed it around a bit. He's playing around. He's playing outside then. Yuzi is playing outside by himself with an M4. So, what can Yuzi do here? He's playing near back steps. He's playing it quiet. He just hit there to see if any terrorists were there. He's using his grenades to flash and try and deal damage to the terrorists, but nothing going according to plan at the moment. The terrorists taking their time. Yuzi also playing relatively defensive. Release with the first kill onto Bordel elsewhere on the map. And down, release with a second kill onto Jiri. Yuzi pops up. Can he get a kill? No, he can't. Nasic with two kills onto release and Yuzi, and they're in trouble. So, three versus three now. Well, what will we see here? Who's G holding the A bomb site by himself? I believe Rattlesnake playing outside with a lovely shot onto Nessic. Well played, Rattlesnake. And now, what well, was a three on three is now a three on two. Rattlesnake spots another terrorist. He's been hit himself. He's going to do the uh, intelligent thing and fall back, but he has been attacked by a terrorist. And Rattlesnake continues. And Rattlesnake knows exactly where he is. Well, he got the better of him by throwing that nade, and Rattlesnake is on 20 HP now. So Rattlesnake, one bullet, and he probably will be dead. So Rattlesnake is preparing himself for what could be a potential heaven push. Hoods G drops Lucas and Ice is by himself. A good shot by Rattlesnake. Well prepared for Ice. Anticipated him having to come up the stairs and uh, got the business done swiftly. So 9-6 to a Nexus. I think they would have preferred 10-5 uh, sorry. But Hoods G um, leading it for a Nexus with 17 kills, 6 deaths. Ice and Bordel both on 13 kills, 1 assist, and 10 deaths. So, still anybody's game. I mean, assuming Eerinus have a good terrorist side, then really they should be winning this game, quite simply, because this is a CT-sided map, and uh, normally, terrorists really, shouldn't, in an ideal world, shouldn't get more than 5 or 4 rounds as counter-terrorists on this map. But we'll see what will happen now. The team, obviously... Both teams are going to switch once the server decides to cooperate. And hopefully that will be sometime soon. And here we go, there's the LO3. So the game is live. What can Anexus do here as terrorists? And uh, what is their... T-side nuke strat going to be. So, back to the good old pistol route. Looks like they're all going to make their way into lobby alongside the bomb. And they're going to, by the looks of things, go for a, for a vent push. Lucas takes down release, playing in main. Over the know they're going to actually push the A-bomb side. They're surrounded. Rattlesnake and Hussji both with two kills. Three on four now. Rattlesnake and Hussji both hurt. Down goes Let's Dance. And Lucas and Jiri find themselves left alone. So Jiri is going to push Squeak. He's going to make noise. MX deals with him. Now Lucas all by himself. Lucas who did get the opening round, opening frag of the round. Playing in main when the T's pushed Squeaky. He's going to peek now. He's going to spot MX. But MX with uh, another beautiful pistol kill. His second of the round. So 10-6 and Nexus. And oh dear. Um, funnily enough in this game, the terrorists have won the pistol round both times. So it's not something you see very often on Nuke on a CT sided map, but obviously that's exactly what a Nexus need. Reason being is we're gonna see Irinus on a Nico now, and we're gonna see a Nexus with SMGs. Or at least I'd like to, to think so. Yeah, we are. We're seeing a few MP7s and a few UMPs out there, usually with a UMP. I think he's spotted Nessich at Ramp. T's taking their time. Yuzi's holding that angle. Spots one of the CTs. Good shot by Jiri with that Desert Eagle. Right onto Yuzi. Devours his face. And now MX is going to start to make his way outside. Oof. What is it with Eerinus and 1D so far? I'll tell you what. If uh, if only 
all deco rounds could uh, could be like that. Some people say the deco isn't as, uh, as good as it used to be. Well, I think after that round, most would beg to differ. Release takes down Nessage. Four versus two now. Whether Nexus obviously do have the guns. Hudge G drops Jiri, so uh, we've got three versus two. And Rattlesnake with a big kill. Can Hudge G take down Ice? Yes, he can. Can Hudge G get his fourth? Actually, it was his third. My bad. Can't count um, today. And uh, a good round by Nexus, especially considering they were two men down at one point. So it's good to see them getting the job done. And it is 11 6 here in Nexus versus Irenus. If Nexus obviously do win this map, then they will progress to the next round of the Prague Challenge. I'm not quite sure who that opposition will be, obviously, whoever that potential opposition will be are currently playing right now. So uh, I guess we'll just have to wait and find out. But again, this is Counter Strike. It could still change. We are seeing Irenus on an eco, which is preparing for the CT. Who might potentially push Hut. So what can Hunter G do here? Hurricane and, and release getting a killer piece after pushing outside against Irenus who are ecoing. Five versus two. Message and Lucas, the only CTs alive. Let's go see what they can do. Lucas is outside. We've already seen him get one dig one one dig. Can he get another? He's getting pushed by MX. No, he can't. Message now with the CT starter pistol. He knows where. A few of the terrorists are, without a doubt. Another MX is somewhere outside. And uh, use that knowledge to obviously grab that kill. He's going to pick up that AK that MX had. So, four versus one, the bomb is ticking. He's being pushed by Hudge G. Good shot by Nessage. Can he get another exit, Frank? I'll tell you what. He's playing quite well at the moment. He's uh, being pushed from behind, but Release gets a job done with a nice jumping one clock to the face of Nessage. And there. Goes the bomb. So 12 6 to a Nexus. See, so Nexus need four more rounds now to emerge victorious in this game. Irinus, well, Irinus need a lot more rounds. And uh, this is going to be their proper buy round on CT. So we saw something similar to what we saw in the first half. The terrorists, funny enough, winning the, the uh, uh, whatchamacallit, the pistol round. And then well, we also saw a Nexus who lost the pistol round turn it round. So as soon as they have got their hands on uh, a few nice weapons. So now we see Irinus with their hands on weapons. So now this is where the real fight comes in. Can Irinus turn this game around now they have their hands on weapons? So Jiri's playing around by himself. We know Jiri's a good player. We've seen a lot from him. He's packed Uzi. Unfortunately, Uzi's still on 10 HP. It looks like the terrorists and Nexus are going to make their way through down round. Jiri, unfortunately for, for uh, Irinus, couldn't hold it by himself. He's going to fall back to Toxic. Let's have a look at what Lucas is doing, playing window room. The terrorist just uh, hanging out a bit in ramp room, keeping the CTs guessing because just go just because you have access to ramp room it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to go to the lower bomb site. You could still go in front of ice here, up rafters, um, up heaven, sorry, into rafters and plant on the upper bomb site. And that's the problem on this map. Both bomb sites are right on top of each other, so a lot of, uh, of people confused where the bomb is planted. Sometimes people hear the bomb plant is planted on the upper bomb site when in reality it's planted on the lower bomb site. So 30 seconds to go, 5 on 5 still. Uses heavy tires. Let's see how the terrorists are going to initiate this attack of the bomb site. Let's have a look at Lucas actually. He was playing window room. Is he going to get a frag? Spots MX. Will uh, trade down MX. Now Hughes is going to get pushed. Hughes on 10 HP but Hughes um, uh, not Hughes, sorry. Release with a kill. Hood G with a kill. And Rattlesnake with a kill. And uh, very well played there by Nexus. Ice returns a favor to uh, Hurricane Husey. He looks like Border was actually going to say this up. No, he's not. They're going to go for it. So, Ice with another good kill. What was a 3 versus 2 is now a 2 versus 2. And Ice spots Hudge G. Can he get that kill? Border kills Hudge G. Ice is looking for this last terrorist who is released. He is going to start defusing. Five seconds to go, and he needs to be covered. bordel has got him covered. Release drops Bordel, and the bomb will be defused. Release, unfortunately, killed the wrong CT. And will Ice get that fourth kill? No, he won't. But still, a big round for Irinus there. Release will be disappointed with himself. But again, he was being shot by one counter terrorist. How many counter terrorists he meant to shoot at at once? He didn't have dual elites. He didn't have two crosshairs. He couldn't aim at two at the same time. Even though it would be cool if you could aim at two places at, at, at once with dual elites. You obviously can't. But oh well. We are still going to see a buy round from both sides. So what are we going to see now? We're going to see a regular um, lobby, one person lobby, one person round. The, 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 the split from an exit. So again, they only need four rounds. They need three rounds to go to draw. But Irinus now have the momentum after winning that round, uh, which they in reality really needed. But so far, as far as this best of three game between Anexus and Irinus is going, it's been very close both here on Nuke and on Mirage. You can't really fault the teams for effort. Still 5 on 5. 
bit of sparring going left, right, and centre, especially here at, uh, at ramp. Nesic with the first kill onto MX. Let's see how Eriness can build on it. Whether Nexus can turn the table around in their favour. Release making his way towards outside Rattlesnake. Playing on top of Yellow. Obviously was boosted there. Important position. Often allows a player to deal with outside. Unfortunately when you get killed there, well... It's not very fun. But anyways, Jiri playing Ramp by himself. And so far, 30 seconds to go. And Nexus don't really seem to be budging much. So we're going to have to wait and see what they're going to do. I think it's going to be an A bomb site push. Coach G making his way, making his way from back steps actually. And here we have at the A push, we're going to have another G knew exactly where Nessage was. And uh, the T's will start to look for any counter terrorists on the bomb site release. Pops out of Hutton, takes down Ice. So three versus four in favour of the terrorist. Hood G with a nice headshot onto Bordel. Two versus four. Now what can Jiri do as he makes his way up from... Actually, no, it looks like he's going to save. Rattlesnake knows exactly where he is, as we can see from there. What's Jiri going to do? Is he going to go there and uh, try and uh, take on all the Inexus players? Rattlesnake is going to drop down. I see we're going to have Hood G dropping down. Can Jiri take him out? Oh, no, he can't. Yes, he can. He gets the job done now. But the problem is now they know exactly where Jiri is. So three versus two. Lucas saving his weapon. And it looks like it is going to be a save from here. This is always unfortunate to see because it's always nice to see CT's attempt to retake bomb sites. But that's one thing about Dean Nuke um, that a lot of people dislike. And I know myself, in my playing days, I used to dislike because it's a very CT-sided map right up to the point where the terrorists plant the bomb. And some people might say, well, that applies for all maps. But a map like DDoS 2, even when the terrorists have the bomb planted, it also depends on where the bomb is planted, and a lot, a, a, a lot, uh, a lot more factors. On Nuke, it's ridiculous how much more T-sided it becomes as soon as the bomb is down. It becomes it, basically what happens is you've got the T's trying to attack the bomb site uh, normally. So what happens is when the bomb, uh, when the, which is why it's a CT sided map because it's a very it's very difficult to attack the bomb sites and as soon as the tables turn you've got the CTs trying to attack the bomb site because the bomb is planted on the bomb site and the CTs uh, basically have the same problems the CTs have which uh, which is why this is a CT sided map but the tables turn very quickly and this is counter track obviously for those of you who, who got what I was saying there um, uh, thanks for getting it I uh, appreciate that, it was probably slightly confusing, but anyways, back to the game. So 13-7 here to Inexus, Jiri playing Grand Room by himself. We've still got five players apiece. And there is a first kill by release, using that AK-47 onto the head of Bordel outside. So let's go and take a look at what Inexus is doing. MX onto Nessie somewhere else on the map. So uh, MX with another kill. MX, I'll tell you what, he's been playing very well with that AK-47. Hoods G, now five versus two, is being... Wow, good shot by Jiri. Release knows where he is, throws that nade, deals no damage however, so 4 versus 2. And now, what are the CTs going to do? Are they going to fall back again? Ice with a interesting shotgun, can he get that pick onto Puzi? No he cannot. So it looks like we're going to have round number 14 for an X as it stands, unless Jiri can pull off a magnificent 4 versus 1 clutch. And spot release, can he take him down, but release is too good for him. 14-7. And it looks like this best of three match altogether is going to go to a Nexus, assuming they can um, grab the next two rounds on the board. But, and again, this is Counter Strike. Irinus might pull it back to 16 14 in their favour, so who knows? We are seeing a buy around, I believe, from the CTs, are we? Yes, we are. M4 on the back of that counter terrorist there. It was obviously an eco the last round. Let's see what the terrorists are going to do. It's like they're going to push straight into the A bomb sites. Let's have a look at what they're going to do here. Release making his way out of put. And uh, being encountered straight away by Nessage, runs out of bullets, actually two by accident, and uh, two kills apiece. Ralph Saint with two kills, which is a very good considering he's an awful pushing that bomb site by himself. He's going to shoot now, throw that nade in towards main. He knows that CT is probably there. We know exactly we've got X-ray vision. He obviously doesn't, so three on three now. Rattlesnake flashing heaven. And where is this bomb? The bomb is actually, funny enough, where is the bomb actually? The bomb is on MX. So where's MX? Where are you? All right, there he is. So uh, they want to get this bomb planted. Obviously, CTs know what they're doing as well. They do have one player on B, and that's going to work as a disadvantage to them. MX will plant this bomb. Rattlesnake is watching main. Down goes Jiri to hook to his AK-47. However, Bordle takes down Rattlesnake in hut. As he came from behind. MX knows exactly where Bordle is. We know Bordle's going to make his way through squeaking. MX with that kill. Two versus one. Can Ice pull this one off now? We've seen what Ice is capable of. MX knows exactly where he is, and MX will finish him off to get a, his first kill of the round. So 15-7. And Exis, you know, we said they had a poor CT side, but I'll tell you what, Irinus have had an even more poor CT side. And that's not being biased, that's just 
stating what we've seen so far. And uh, obviously, whenever the T's win pistol round on you, if you're fully honest, you know you're going to be in trouble. So it looks like we're going to have an all outside push bar using now. So let's see what we're going to see. The CTs know they need to win this round, which is why they've all bought Parmasses and Nessus has bought that fancy cock And down will go Bordel to MX's AK 47. And it looks like all the T's are going to make their way down back steps to try and get this bomb planted on the lower bomb site. So who's that one terrorist by himself? It's actually Hughes playing lobby, waiting, uh, trying to catch out some of the CTs who are going to rotate. But let's actually focus. Got a good shot by Jiri with his Desert Eagle to this deco. So four versus four now. Still, anybody's game for MX there with the AK-47. Takes down Jiri. Lucas takes down Hunts G with the Farmas. <laughs> you usually drops down into vents, finishes off Nessich, and now it's all down to ice. Three versus one. I tell you what, an exits are quite heavily tagged, but the problem is he's on a FAMAS. So uh, can he get a, you know, pull this three versus one clutch here on New? He spotted one of the terrorists, he's been hit himself by that nade, but both Inexus players are quite heavily tagged. So he spots Husey in vents with his FAMAS. Can't get enough down, can he take MX down? He does. He's going to try and wait and find that last terrorist, but unfortunately Husey got the better of him, and that is good game. 